Hello friends, it's been a little while. I uh, hope you've all been well. I had to take a little breather from YouTube this last month to finish up a scoring project that I've been working on. But I am back in action and yeah, a lot has happened over this last month. There's a lot to catch you guys up on and I will in good time. But today we are gonna take a look at Ava's new offering called Nostalgic Synth. They were nice enough to send me a copy uh, to review on this channel. So uh, that's what we're gonna do today. Let's jump right into it. All right, so here it is, Unity Nostalgic Synth. So I've been messing around with a few of these pad patches and I like what I'm hearing so far. Very nice. So I'm not gonna do a super deep dive on all of the functionality. I recommend going to Ava's website and watching the full walkthrough. I will show you the basics here though. Essentially the concept is much the same as their Unity trailer synth. And by the way, I did a review of the uh, Unity trailer synth a while back. I'll link that up above. I absolutely loved the Unity trailer synth. So I'm stoked to add this to my collection as well. So the way it works is that we have these three ADSR shapes here on the main interface and these three Three different shapes also represent the three sound sources for each patch. The red source at the top here represents different hardware synths uh, that they've sampled like uh, Yamaha DX7, Juno 106, Mini Moog, uh, Jupiter 8, and those are kind of like the foundational tones uh, for each patch. The orange source in the middle represents organic sound sources that they've uh, taken from guitar and violin, uh, piano and bass. And finally, the yellow source on the bottom represents uh, various different organic fully textures, which add some really lovely uh, depth and character to each patch. The identity triangle at the left here gives us the ability to mix between our sources. And we also have the ability to assign different parameters to the mod wheel. So I can apply a low pass filter, for instance, and that sounds like this. And we also have this hilarious dice roll option on the top right here. So we can click this and just get a random patch. Let's see what this sounds like. Cool, let's try it again. Very cool. So again, if you want the full walkthrough of the synth, uh, head on over to Ava's website. Uh, there's a lot of tweaking that you can do on the back end of the synth and get into some really interesting sound design. I believe there's also about 300 presets that ship with this synth. Uh, I haven't even gone through all of them yet. Uh, and you know, I'm all about solid presets as a starting point, just to spark some inspiration. Just curate some amazing sounds for me to use and I'll put them to good use. <laughs> Let's just do that right now, actually. We'll just fire up some presets and write something, see where it takes us. Just quickly before I do that though, I do want to shout out the Production Music Academy. Uh, we had a lot of new members join uh, during the Black Friday sale. So I do want to welcome all the new members and uh, just let you know that if you are interested in learning more about how to license your music, I do have a free course called Intro to Music Licensing. You can get that link in the description below. Join up and take the course for free. Come take a look inside the Academy. Check out some of the courses that I have available. I've got a course specifically about writing Synthwave, uh, if that's something that interests you. The courses can be purchased as standalone products or they can be accessed via the master tier, which includes uh, access to absolutely everything, all courses, all community benefits. Uh, those links are all in the description below. Or you can learn more at productionmusicacademy.com. All right, let's get to work. All right, cool, so let's get a track started. Maybe I'll just kick things off with some simple chord pads. Let's try Cinematic God. I like the sound of that. Uh, we'll bring our tempo down to something uh, a little slower, maybe 100. And maybe I'll start off in a key that's uh, easy for me, maybe A minor here. Okay, here we go. Let's try moving it down to the F, maybe from there. And then rounding it off with uh, D minor seventh here. That'll sound cool. Here we go. 
All right, so let's just consolidate that. And I'll also fix the note length. And maybe I'll just copy this patch and see if we can find another pad patch to texturize this with. Let's try cinematic space. And this patch sounds like this. I like the way it's kind of detuned. adjust the volume of the cinematic god patch. That sounds pretty cool. Okay, let's maybe bring in a keys patch into the mix. Maybe try this lo-fi Tokyo. What does that sound like? Something like that could work. All right, let's put something down. Here we go. I'm just going to quantize that. Let's copy that out. Cool. It's a nice vibe. Okay, I found a couple simple uh, loops on Splice that we can use to just kind of get some ideas started. Normally, I'd probably put in some more thought to the drums, but for the sake of this video, I just want to get something started real quick. Let's bring this down a bit. That works. Now, I think we also need a bass line. And for like a track that's kind of leaning into the synthwave vibe, I have this one serum patch that's going to work perfectly. And I believe it's called Beefcake. And it just sounds like this. So let's make this real simple. I'll just record one note in. Let's zoom into the MIDI and I'll just copy this out. Now it sounds like this. Okay, so which is not quite where we want it to be, but I'll show you what I'd probably do in this case. First of all, let's adjust these last two notes. And I'll copy that region out. And I'll also copy this out to the next two bars, but let's take a look at this MIDI. The root is changing here from A to G, so we're just gonna pull this down. And same idea for our last two chords. So let's just copy this out. And we're finishing on the D minor. So now we got a bass line that sounds like this. Now, obviously that's a bit too loud. Let's bring it down and let's apply a bit of kickstart to the space, which is just giving it that side chain effect. Sweet. Okay, coming back to the Unity Nostalgic Synth, let's copy this patch and find something that's like a little bit more plucky, a little more aggressive for like an arpeggiated vibe. That could work. So yeah, that sounds good. I gotta come up with a cool pattern for this though. Might take a little bit of messing around to come up with a, a cool arpeggiated pattern. So I'm gonna press pause here and do a little bit of experimenting. Okay, so here's what I came up with. So just bringing that down in the mix slightly, and maybe we can double that patch up with something else that sounds cool. Let's see what else we got in the Plux menu. Okay, let's try this patch called Last of Us. I'm just gonna copy this over. Yeah, I like that. adds a bit of ambient shimmer to it. And I was just taking a look at what I got in the key of A minor in Splice uh, under Synthwave, and this guitar loop came up that I think could work. Let's throw that into the mix, and we're gonna have to time stretch that out a bit. Let's bring the volume down. And let's find a lead patch. So I landed on this uh, leads patch called DX77 Jupiter, which sounds like this. Mm -hmm. 
So I thought about a real simple lead line uh, to throw down here. Let's just punch this in. Here we go. Gonna do a bit of cleanup. Copy this part over. And again, maybe we can texturize this lead line with another patch. We haven't checked out anything from the drones menu yet. Let's just pick something at random. This one's called freeze. It sounds like this. Let's bring this up in the mix bit. Nicely saturated like that. Let's hear how it sounds with our Jupiter. Nice. Okay, so let's get organized here. We got two pad patches. We got this one keys patch called Lo-Fi Tokyo. We've got this arpeggiated pattern. We've got our leads. We got the drums, the bass, and this guitar on the bottom. I'm gonna press pause, do a little mix magic, see where it lands. All right, so did a bit of cleanup on the session, some compression, a bit of saturation, and I did a really quick arrangement, added a few transition samples to the mix, and this is what we got. Threw in a bit of last minute lead there just for fun. That was a patch called Boat Horn, which I thought sounded kind of cool, but I <laughs> realized there's a bit of delay because my ozone uh, is in the mix right now. So sounded a bit sloppy, but it was fun. So overall, I'm pretty stoked on the nostalgic synth. I could definitely see myself using it uh, for synth wave, probably throw it on my lo-fi hip hop tracks every now and then as well. Things are sounding pretty good right out of the box. I was able to put something together very quickly. Still got to flesh this track out a little bit more, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining me today, my friends. And thank you, Ava, for sending over the Nostalgic Synth. Make sure to go check out Ava's website. I got a link to their website in the description of this video. It is an affiliate link. So if you decide to buy any of their great products, I do get a little kickback. And the Nostalgic Synth has an introductory uh, discounted price on at the moment. So thanks again for watching. Uh, make sure to give this video a like if you got some value from it. Subscribe to the channel, stay in touch. Uh, let me know what you thought in the comments below. It's always good to hear from you guys. And in the meantime, I'm wishing you all well. Happy composing.